Well, I I am professional. I'm a constant professional. You just turn the switch on, and I turn right into professional mode. That's what a professional is, Chad. Uh, I know you don't know about that. Well, well, uh, I think you might want to look again. <laughs> Take another look in the mirror. Why would people order our programs when my main sidekick, that's what you are, sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> what my main sidekick says i'm not professional that's not good chad that's that's not good that's why we actually are at negative two listeners now we actually went in the negative we, you and i stopped listening exactly <laughs> exactly Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Relative Run Readiness. What are you giggling at? <laughs> because you just, we are now on take two, and on the first take, you were making fun of me for not being professional, and you were the one who might wrong, and this is your job. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> you want to fight about it? <laughs> no, because uh, he would beat me, but... Okay, so... What what we are talking about today is near and dear to my heart because it's about our infant evolution, we're calling it, or in other words, training our kids or training as we are going from adolescence to older. You know, what, what do we do there? When do we start training these type of things? So a lot of people out there have kids or maybe you are a young athlete yourself who's interested in these topics. That's what we're talking about in today's show, is there any bantering we would like to do first, Chad? Um, let's see here. I, you bring up infants. Neither of us have them anymore. But um, infants are interesting, I think, for many reasons. <laughs> Matt, go. <laughs> 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 Wait, no, no, no. Okay. What, uh, thinking back now, Mia's, Mia's getting on an age now. What is she? Nine? Yep. Yeah. yeah she's getting long in the tube. Long in the tube. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, so you've had your, 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 uh, distance from her being an infant, infant, uh, is, is quite a bit longer than mine. Uh, but what are some of the things that you remember about her being a baby? Like, what's like your, your top memory? Good memory. I remember that I would change her, and while I'm changing her, then she would, you know, pee or poop as soon as I put her into a new diaper. <laughs> really? Yeah. That was so frustrating. To <laughs> Did PK ever do that to you? Uh, not that I remember. I don't remember that as like a uh, characteristic of hers. Yep. yep. Yeah. And we used to call her toots because she tooted a lot. <laughs> Just like her daddy. Yep. If, if any of her friends actually listen, but thankfully they don't. They're only nine, but she'd be so <laughs> upset with me. But that was her nickname, Toots. But uh, she really doesn't toot much anymore. No, I. you know what? It's more about the stuff. With, with Mia, she was um, preemie, so yep. two months premature. So we spent the first couple months in the hospital, and really that first whole year was a blur. She had such a small, obviously – stomach she couldn't take in much so that means she had to feed even more often mm -hmm. so Aaron and I had to really learn to work in shifts and Mia probably was up every two hours or so yeah and needed to to have her you know have her bottle again or to uh to just be be taken care of so she was basically sleeping for um, an hour or maybe two at a time just 24 seven for like a year or so it seemed like. And yeah. so that was a lot, but then it was once she started crawling, I, I remember thinking as a strength coach, like this is so interesting because this is a lot of times we talk about in PT and where I was doing a lot of mentorships or internships with PTs and programs where you would basically work people almost in that four point crawling position and working your way up to standing positions. That's oh, how yeah. we, that's how we learn to, 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 to move, right? We first push the ground away and look around when we're babies. And so the first, uh, bone from what I have learned is the clavicle and uh, the first bone to develop, I should say. So, makes sense that that is part of what 
we would incorporate in our strength training. I, I believe in that concept to, to the point where a lot of times I feel like we uncork a lot of training needs for downstream, say lower back pain or things, issues that a client may have or somebody might have for performance, like rating for their running, where we're just not looking as much in their overall progressions at their are at their sway in their trunk so their arms might be swinging without control and we have to get back to those basics in the trunk work so you know again that's stuff we talk about in the podcast but that's interesting to me that that is the first thing that they really do is essentially a push-up and they look around yeah you know and then but their form is terrible <laughs> <laughs> which again Tells you that our spine is meant to flex and yeah. it's meant to round. It's meant to bend sideways. You know, we're meant to do those things. So really, we don't want to get too far away from that and that whole concept about how we just should always have this like sort of long, strong spine in every position we're doing. That just is to me, that's that's actually going to uh, to essentially set us up for failure because we're going to end up reaching behind us and grabbing a grocery bag or something like that. We need to be able to train that way. And so learning how a kid progresses and learning and watching Mia take her first step, you know, and and lots of falling, you know, there's, there's so many concepts there that I learned from. And the main thing I remember talking to Mia about when she was really just a toddler, really just just an infant is that she needed to try it again, you know, yep. and, and we, as parents, we are afraid that our kid's going to get hurt, but you, you've, you've got to let them make mistakes. And, and I think that that is something that really helped me as a coach, actually. And sure. I think I started, oh, I, I started making room for that in the programming more, you know, and again, I talk about, um, new new people coming into the program or even experienced people that are doing new things that haven't maybe done some of these balance drills before and stuff like that and paralysis through analysis you can overcoach it or if you're coaching yourself you can overthink it right um you you shouldn't be perfect at first that's how your body is learning it's how you're making those mistakes and yeah you're going to fall a few times but, you know, of course, within reason, you shouldn't be doing things that are more advanced than you're ready for. Um, but when you try new things that you are ready to learn and absorb, you are creating a new capacity or you are increasing capacity. So expect to fall a few times. Sure. I think about that a lot right now. That was with, a really good answer I gave, by the way. Uh, that was, yeah, I'm yeah, going to edit that. One. I'm going to edit top, that out. Top, top. <laughs> We're going to go straight to my answer. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I think about that a lot right now. Uh, uh, Penelope is a very active three-year-old. She just turned three, and she is trying a lot of new things. Um, I built her a little pirate ship sandbox uh, a couple months ago, and she loves it. She has a great time. But I put this I, on the front of it. I screwed on this this big uh, mast. It's a, a like a curtain rod thing that I screwed onto the boat and put a pirate flag up at the top. And she grabs onto that. She jumps up on the side of the the sandbox and she wants to walk around it. And my, of course, my immediate response that I have to try and, you know, tamp down is get off of there. You're going to fall and hurt yourself. Well, she might. She might just fall and hurt herself. But I think that the when you talk about the nervous system development of her trying to balance on a, a piece of two by three. I mean, that is so important for her development. And then, you know, she just had her birthday and and I got her one of those three-wheeled scooters. And I remember taking her out that first time and she did not want me to let go of that handlebar. And now, less than a week later, I can't keep up with her. (laughs) That's awesome. You know, she's just learning like that. Well, okay, so there's the – first of all, shaking my head at you because – you always do this to me, man. Mia comes over to the house, sees this <laughs> awesome freaking sandbox. She's you've got swings on the trees, and 
you know, and she always kind of looks at me like, what's up? Like, <laughs> I don't build things. I build people. I don't build things. And you always make me look bad, Chad. And that's another topic, I guess. But yeah, you know, I just don't go to Chad's house and you'll be fine. But I love what you're saying there where when this is the brag and dad part, I know, but Mia's always really, really active. And again, my sister thinks she doesn't live here. She lives in Connecticut, but she thinks that I'm timing Mia around the park. How fast can you get around the park? Okay, now I, I want you to do it twice, et cetera. Uh-huh. And that's not what happens at all. And I believe absolutely that kids should just play. And there shouldn't be anything really designed or constructed. You know, she's doing pull-ups on her own. And dude, she's... dude, you got to tell that story about her. You, she knew she was going to get in trouble. <laughs> and she did it anyways. You got to tell that story. When, when, when we were passing by the park the yeah, other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we do, you know, we do our little family walks around the neighborhood and stuff. And we walk by the park. And I mean, that's just like, I mean, talk about just that's luring her in right and she's like can i just go i she's like a monkey right now she just wants to just you know climb on everything and pull on everything and and um uh can i do that and i was like no honey because you know we we've got to get back home you got to take a shower we got to get ready for bed this and that and she just kind of looks at me and just Runs across the street. I was so <laughs> mad at her. She just decided to take her chances with it. <laughs> just do it anyways. Ask for forgiveness later. Uh-huh. And she just ran over there and did her pull up and flipped over. And, you know, and I was, but I was secretly impressed. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, But, you know, she doesn't normally do that. But that's how much she loves just just playing and, and doing things like this. And, of course, playing other sports and and those type of things, but uh, Mia also will ask to walk to school, which is a few miles to walk. Like she wants to do those kind of things, um, and that's that's just part of what I think she knows. You know, that's just the 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 culture that I'd like to think we created as well. But this isn't a rant on on you know how good of an athlete my daughter is. I just think that encouraging our kids to just have a good time and just enjoy themselves and go play and make it fun um, and not having too much structure there. But, you know, I do have some hard, fast rules. And one of them is just, you know, sun's out, so are you kind of stuff. You know, we're, um, we're really very much into getting outdoors as much as we can. Of course, with the COVID restrictions, it was a little tougher, but there's still uh, plenty of things that we were able to do. And then, you know, just really looking at with the gym, she comes into the gym. She'll be in here later today because uh, I'll be working with, with Gwen on Zoom for a bit after I pick her up from school. And, you know, she she will she'll have fun. Like, she'll create her little obstacle courses for herself. You know, she'll throw the rings down and she'll hop in those and she'll climb up and down the rope and she'll do different things. She'll run on the woodway. She likes to see how fast she can do that. She likes to go backwards, I think, more than anything and swing on it. But, you know, those are the kind of things that I like to try to encourage with her. And and really, I'm impressed with just how much uh, stronger. She's gotten a sense really from like seven till nine, you know, she's really gotten stronger. So I think that kind of leads into what's next. And so I did tell Mia, I said, if you would like to do some workouts to get better at push-ups and to start doing some lunges and stuff like that, we can, we can do that. We set up a home gym, uh, just in our garage, nothing fancy, just a little, just a little micro gym, you know, I think it's 56 square feet. Uh, and I call it the booty lab because, uh, mommy does work out in there a lot. And so it's our booty lab, but, um, of course Mia likes to try to do what mommy does and stuff. So, you know, a couple times a week, um, Aaron will do some workouts with, with Mia to, together, but if Mia doesn't want to, then they don't, then they won't do it. It's yeah. really up to her. But if she does do it, then, of course, mommy is a strength coach and understands how to help Mia to, you know, to, to cue her a little bit so she can she can do the things that mommy's doing. 
not the level mommy's doing, but just doing the basics and learning them really well. So you think you think nine, nine, ten years old is probably is that a good time to start yeah, strength training? I, I do, and um, there there's a lot of misconceptions out there. And when I was growing up, it was that weights could stunt your growth, like it shoves in your growth base or something. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, look, I'm not uh, I'm not trying to. I understand, especially if you're not in this profession, but you have somebody who's running and jumping and playing constantly and hanging from bars and doing all this kind of stuff. If that, if, if that isn't going to shove in growth plates, then certainly right. doing some, uh, calisthenics are, are kind of what we would focus on way more, you know, body weight type of training, first of all, because that's enough capacity. That's enough resistance at first, you know? So, you know, but then, you know, getting into some lighter weights and, doing a little bit more accumulation, things like that. I mean, that's certainly something that we can we can do with a younger athlete. But really, again, this is where I say it doesn't matter if you're really a young athlete who might be, say, 12 years old and now wanting to really have some, some focused training for your sport. Again, shouldn't be overly focused. Um, and I should say sports, plural, because uh, if I – I, you'd be amazed at how many 12 year old kids have come into the facility over the last 20 years who are trying to specialize in a sport already. And I, I personally don't want any part of that. Um, they, they, sh in my opinion, uh, athletes should be having fun again and doing lots of different sports, even if they're not any good at it. It's just, learning to be a part of a team and learning to challenge yourself in different capacities, different ways, but talk about advancing the nervous system. I mean, essentially yeah. between like six and 12 is when you're like a sponge for that kind of stuff. And so really take advantage of it. Um, uh, so, you know, again, just in Mia's case, she's done martial arts and horseback riding and soccer. Um, thankfully Gabby's getting, into uh reno here that professional basketball player that i've worked with since she was 15 and um she wants to play basketball now so i'm gonna uh ask gabby if she can just we can go out and play a, a game of horse or something <laughs> nothing too crazy uh but mia really wants to play with gabby like yeah, she, yeah. she wants some pointers you know yeah um, oh my god but, what an know. experience oh yeah i yeah. mean she's mia looks up to gabby so much so just to be out there with her and, and and again making it fun but gabby again gabby did lots of different sports before she became a professional basketball player um and that's again why she was she went to do track and uh, she just she went to the olympic trials at 15 in the high jump but she a lot of people don't realize she was also also set several records and hurdles and she went to a huge decathlon meet in Albuquerque and won that in high school, uh, you know, d but it's not about the fact that she was winning a lot of things. It was the fact that she was doing a lot of different things, right? you know, and that was the important part. So, you know, uh, to me, I think once you get to be maybe 16 or so, that's when we look at specializing towards something a little bit more because, for whatever reasons, we tend to see that college coaches want to see these numbers, uh, performance numbers, really by their junior year if they're going to give them a scholarship. So you, we are kind of pressed for, for that. But what I remind people of, and if you have kids your, yourself, the cream rises to the top, and I'm and and I don't want to um, offend anybody out there that that um, believes that just with more specific training that, that their kid would go from zero to a hundred, but it's specificity and really getting into that, that obviously improves the overall capacity and the ability to display that power. Right. But essentially when an athlete has it, they are good enough to make it to those higher levels. That's going to show up. Yeah. And they're going to they're going to rise to the top. Eventually, they will make they will make that decision. But I encourage people not to make that decision too early because a lot of people will get a false positive. What I call it, if you're if you have a 12 year old athlete, and I remember 
um, this with a few athletes that, well, she's the fastest triathlete or the fastest, you know, miler in the country right now at 12 years old. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, okay. So you're going to, you're specializing her now. I'm sorry, but those people, um, you, you don't hear about them when, when they're in their twenties and yeah. when, when they should be able to really excel at maybe one sport. So, um, Oh, well, so I, I'm thinking a little bit about this concept about um, child development, infant uh, evolution, whatever you want to call it right now, and sort of developing the whole athletic uh, 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 arm of being a human. Yes, and I'm going to do something really rude because um, you've talked enough. I need to keep talking. <laughs> but I, I'm sorry to interrupt, you. but you just said arm, and it remind me. The other thing I really believe in, we have put puzzles together from when she was just as soon as she could figure it out. We're playing with Legos, things like this, drawing. She plays the guitar. And my point to that is that there is so much cognitive development, and especially when you're talking about hand-eye coordination, but also just literally putting the pieces in the puzzle together for cognitive development, that that cannot be stated enough. I think, you know, this obviously not just all around athleticism, but that's going to contribute greatly to that. And I always tell the story about how when Gabby was a kid, she actually ate all her food with her left hand instead of her right. So she was working, um, you know, a little bit more on her left side, even though she was right handed. Right. So that's I just wanted to include that because it's not all about breaking a sweat either. Sure. Yeah. No, that's super important as well. Um, but going back to my much more important comment is, um, you know, if you look at, and we've talked about this, uh, if you look at the uh, first couple of phases in the R3 program, they're really looking at the whole body, not specific, quote unquote, runner's movements, or what somebody might look at and go, how is that going to uh, make me run faster, you know, or run, run longer or whatever you want to say. And so, you know, that really is kind of that, that child training where you are, you're training the way the whole body moves all the time. You would think we had this whole podcast just to uh, sell the basics to people or the program, <laughs> but... <laughs> um, honestly, this wasn't planned, but when you say that, like, I'm just, I've always, I've always said, I honestly, I feel like now that you said that Mia could do our basics program with me or mommy, or she could do that and, and get a lot out of that because it does, it does start with more calisthenics and it is specific to the human body and our biomechanics especially if you include our you know 110 self assessment but the the point is that that self assessment is very specific to maybe some restrictions you might have now a lot of kids don't have those restrictions uh -huh. so they could probably just go right into that basics work and what i would say there though is that when you when you said okay it doesn't get running specific yet I, I put it this way to people. Yes, you're absolutely right. I would say that unless you have a need for physical therapy and you are dealing with a very specific injury or a very specific limitation, going through a program that addresses the basics, I ask one question, not what sport do you do or what do you want to prepare for, but do you put one foot in front of the other? Because if you do, then you need you need the basics. You need to start with the basics. Right. So yes, Gabby Williams started with the basics. Didn't matter that she was going into her basketball season or her track season, whatever. She started with the basics. And the reason why, unfortunately, that we met, which was ended up being very fortunate because we're so close now, but is that she tore her ACL not doing the basics and just exceeding her capacities. She could put so much power and she had so much discipline, but she could put so much forth, but she was firing a cannon out of a canoe. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Well, folks, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation about babies. <laughs> Uh, about this development and uh if you do uh go ahead and like and share this podcast also find us on facebook and instagram at pendola training p-e-n-d-o-l-a find us on the interwebs at www.pendolaproject.com did i say pendola training before or did i say pendola i don't know Project? i kind of check out you don't listen to no. me at all do you no uh find us pendola project on all those things that you go to the internets for and uh you know go ahead and try out our r3 program whether you are uh a young athlete or a veteran athlete try them all out yeah man all right